Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and I'm doing what all good artists do, which is buy more paper than you need. <laughs> I like to buy extra paper so I don't get precious with it because the second I get precious is when I say, well, if I don't have a really good idea for a painting, I'm not going to do any because I don't want to waste the last of my paper. So this is my uh, precious doggy. I'm happy to get precious about him. He just had his eighth birthday. But this is my drawer and I keep just sheets of different kinds of paper in here and I mark them by the brand, the finish and the color. And yes, there are different colors and that's what I wanna talk about in this video, which kind of papers have a whiter tone to them, which ones are more cream and what you might think about when you're making your decisions about what kind of paper to either purchase or to choose. So let's get started with that, shall we? Most people don't have space for a big old flat file, and I realize that. One of the papers that's the whitest that I'm gonna be recommending in this video is one that you can only get by buying a full sheet. So just take that into consideration if you want really white watercolor paper. And you can, instead of having it in a big flat file stored, you can tear it all down right when you get it. So fold it back and forth, you know, six times, eight times or something like that and then tear it. And you might need to start the very, very end of it and then lean on one side and pull the other side. Just pull them sideways apart from each other. You don't wanna lift upward because you can get all kinds of weird tears if you do that. That'll give you two half sheets. And then all you have to do is fold those in half in the same kind of a way. Go back and forth and back and forth and then tear them. Then you can store that smaller stack of papers for you know, future paintings in whatever way you store your paper. I would recommend storing it away from heat, away from light, away from dust, away from moisture. Maybe put it in a plastic bag of some kind and then in a box or something just to keep it nice. I know that some people have had papers go bad, quote unquote, go bad over time, but it's over many years. So, you know, just use it in the near, near enough future that you don't have to worry about that. I have never had any paper go bad. The two brands I'll talk about today are Arches and Saunders Waterford. Both of them have a watermark in them. And the watermark, you can avoid painting in those specific spots. I tend to just put it in a corner of my painting that I'm not planning on doing anything that's super important because sometimes paint will settle into those watermarks. I always mark my papers with just little notes in the corner so I know what it was because I always seem to have papers laying around here that are already trimmed down. Now on the right hand side is arches. The one on the bottom is the bright white and the one on the top is natural white and they are pretty close. The natural is a little creamier and the the bright white is a little cooler of a color but there's not a huge vast difference. And, it, you know, buying one or the other doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference in my mind. But when you're talking Saunders Waterford, the top one is their regular white. And the next one is the high white, which is much whiter than any of the arches. So if you're really looking for a bright white paper, then if that's your priority, then the high white from Saunders Waterford is a good paper to try. And it, as far as I know, it only comes in... The big sheets, it, I don't think it comes in the pads. I could be wrong, but I don't believe so. And looking at each of these papers, you kind of need to assess what your priority is in your painting. And for me, I like different papers for different things, so I use all different kinds of stuff. So the first example is going to be on the high white, and I chose it because there's some really nice brights in here. There's brights in the water, in the sand, and in that streak in the sky, I wanted some of those whites in the clouds as well. And the colors, when you're working on the high white, will tend to be purer than when you're working on a color of paper that has some color to it. If you think about some of those watercolor papers that have just a little tiny bit of acru to them, they're not a pure white white, those end up adding basically that little sheen of whatever that color is onto whatever color you're painting. So it's as though you're dulling down your colors with whatever the color of the paper is. 
So if you're using one of the darker ones, then your painting will be darker and you need to adjust for that. But I'm gonna show you in some other paintings that you can still get something that feels like there's really nice whites in it. And you don't have to have a super white paper like this. Sometimes the high white or the bright white, depending on where you get it or time of year, I don't know. I've just, various times I go searching around to check prices and the bright white or the high white, since I guess it takes more to make it whiter, they charge more for it. And I, you know, sometimes it's 20 cents more per sheet, which is not a big deal. Sometimes it's a lot more than that. So always keep an eye on that. But another thing, if you haven't used Saunders Waterford before, the paper itself has a, I can only describe it as a softer surface. Like when you touch it and you touch a piece of arches, the arches just feels a little sturdier and the Saunders Waterford just feels more pliable. So there's times when the Saunders Waterford, when I'm doing techniques that are, you know, really reliant on lifting or really reliant on a lot of layers or masking fluid or anything that's going to beat up the paper, and, you know, especially lifting is where I struggle with it, then I don't want to choose this paper because if I know the technique is going to be to lift off a bunch, not just dabbing off with a paper towel, but really lifting up some areas and trying to remove some paint to get things to blend the way that I want them to, I'm going to choose arches instead. But for this one, I knew I could keep all of these very, very pale brush strokes in such a way that I could end up leaving the white of the paper and not really having to do a lot of technique to fuss with it more if that makes any kind of sense. And for me, a lot of the experience of painting and the way the materials feel to use, whether it's the paper or the brushes or the colors or the technique, whatever it is, it's very difficult to put it into words. And it's a different experience for every person. So sorry if this doesn't make as much sense as I would like it to. It's perfect sense inside my head. But I'm gonna take all of these paintings at the end and compare them so we can kind of look at some specific differences between what the papers did for the paintings. So we'll do that at the end. Next, we're going to look at the Saunders Waterford White, and it was the darkest out of the four papers that I showed you. But I want to show you that it's not going to feel completely dark all the time because I'm going to do two paintings and show you that this one has a bright streak underneath of the sun as well as the sun itself. And I'm going to add more white into the foam that's lapping up onto the beach so I can have more brightness down there. And here though, I wanted to kind of do a messy wash so you could see what I mean about this paper having some challenges. And the wash didn't come out really smoothly. And if your washes generally come out kind of messy like this, then do things like focus on the sky that I did in the previous painting and avoid paintings on this that have large washes. And normally I would avoid this paper because my washes don't go all that great and the Saunders seems to accentuate them. I don't know if anybody else has a, that experience, but that has been mine. But I'm able to you know, work through everything else in the painting and I, I do love the rest. I may add something else to the sky later on to try to recover the painting from that. But I was able to leave all of these nice whites in the foam that's lapping up on the shore like I had planned. Uh, I could add lots of color and, you know, put a lot into the rock that's there. I could add lots of details onto the waves. But in general, this paper just doesn't want you to beat it up. It wants you to just put your colors down and then walk away. And for me, that is often quite challenging. It's probably why I lean more on my arches because my arches can do more things. Whereas I just have more struggles with this paper, but it just does so many other things in such lovely ways. Now, would you guess at this point that this is the darkest of the four papers? Probably not. There is some almost, you know, creaminess to the, the sun and the reflection, but look at all that water and all the whites that I've left in the water, those look white white. They look like a cool white, not a warm white. So you can create that because when you do negative painting around something that's white, the more contrast you get, the more those whites look white. So just because this paper looks darker 
then it doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be able to paint something that has white left in it. So um, I painted one more using the Saunders Waterford White, and this one is, is even a little more obvious when you, you see it at the end because I wanted to keep those whites around the bubbles or all that foam nice and white. And I wanted everything else to go a little more cream even than, than this. I wanted to make them more yellow. I had a blast with all the rocks. You know, I don't know if you know anything about me. I love painting rocks. And I had fun looking at all the shapes that I saw and the cracks that were in the rocks and the way that the water made some of them shine in particular areas. I changed up the orientation and that sort of thing. And this is a quarter sheet painting. This is not a little tiny thing. So my rocks got nice and big. I could really get into putting colors in and letting them run and letting them mix on the paper. Super, super fun. Most of the rocks were made entirely with ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide with just a little bit in some of them of the, um, I think it was yellow ochre. And then there were a couple rocks that had a lot of red in them. So I threw some reds and yellows and stuff, but it was very, very limited in the colors. There was one rock that had this really cool green and blackness to it that was super cool. I mean, there's just something about rocks. They're very freeing because they're just rock shapes. Nobody's going to get mad if it doesn't look like that particular rock, but it also gives you a chance to practice a lot of your painting skills. The photo reference for this one is over at Paint My Photo. I'm going to post all the links on my blog in case you want to go paint some of these yourself. But uh, I love Paint My Photo. They have lots of pictures that we can use without worry about copyright. They're uploaded by photographers who give us permission to use them. The sand colors here were Burnt Tiger's Eye mixed with some yellow ochre. Because I, as I said, I wanted the kind of yellowish sandy color, but I wanted it to feel like it's water. I loved painting all those bubbles. It was just a blast. I didn't follow the photograph exactly, but I was looking for the feeling, the vibe of all of those bubbles. And the Saunders Waterford ends up looking nice and bright. Those whites look white. Just because the paper looks a little darker, don't let it throw you. It's all about what you put around the white areas. And um, all of these paintings, by the way, are gonna be ones that I'm gonna offer to my $10 and up patrons. I do a monthly video for them, a monthly watercolor video, 10 bucks and up. And I'm going to let them choose which one of these is their next one um, over the first weekend of August next weekend. So if you're somebody who would like to do some real time painting with me every month, there's a new video there. You can go see the ones that are already uploaded as well. So I'm going to give them a choice of what we shall paint together. Next up is Arches Natural White. It's the darker of the two arches, and as I showed you, it's not that much darker necessarily, but I chose this photo because I wanted to take out the background because I wanted to do two paintings, one on each of the arches, where we can kind of compare what it looks like to have a painting that doesn't have a background, just has white behind it. And this one I thought would be easy enough to get rid of that dark background. Well, the camera, decided it was not going to turn on or else like dummy me just hadn't hit the button and I didn't realize that until I got to this last phase but I can tell you a little about what I did here which was to paint the entire caps of these two mushrooms at the bottom I painted them in a like creamish color yellow ochre color and once that was dry I put masking fluid on for all of the little dots on there I don't know there's probably a name for those dots but I painted those over with masking fluid, let it dry, painted the red over it, including the shading. And when that dried, I took all the masking fluid off and could paint in the shadows on all of those little bits. So there's at least that much, <laughs> not very helpful otherwise, sorry about that. But you can see that the background color has a little bit of color to it. There's just, you know, the, the slightest vintage feel to it because it's got a little bit of color. If it had super white behind it, then it wouldn't have that kind of soft feel. And it's one of the things that attracts me to arches. It's one of the reasons I don't use the high white in the Saunders Waterf Waterford very often because I don't usually want 
that much screaming white. My style is going to be a little softer if I can use a paper that doesn't have that much vibrant contrast to it. But let's look at the bright white. Remember the bright white in arches is not that much brighter than the, the regular traditional white. So it's not going to have a vast difference, but I chose it because we have all these hard edges around these bottles. And the hard edges are fine. If I were painting a flower, I might want something softer, so I might not want to use a brighter paper. But for something that has really crisp edges like this, totally fine to have more contrast with it. It would have looked incredible probably on the high white, just because it's got these, these pops of really strong color in the bottles. But the thing that I love about having a little smattering of everything in the drawer is that I can always find the paper that I think is going to achieve what I want in my painting. And how do you know that? Well, you make a plan before you start painting. Sometimes you'll do a sketch and you'll think, okay, well, I want my colors to really sing like this, or I want to push this element, and I want to make this one look stronger, brighter, sharper edged, or I want to soften it more. And so sometimes I will go literally to the Saunders Waterford regular white, the darkest one because I want some of that earthiness added to the colors that I'm going to be painting it in rather than having something bright. And that comes from experience. It's not something I can say, yes, here, this photo should always be painted on this. It's always personal choice what you do. But for me, I like having the options of different papers. So hopefully now that I've showed you kind of some of my papers that might give you some ideas on something you might like to have in your own collection of, of papers. Now, I'm going to let you know something else that I just discovered. Every now and again, I go out looking for whatever the current price is on things like watercolor paper, because paper seems to be fluctuating a lot in these last couple of years since the pandemic. And after having, of course, ordered a big box of paper, was not the right time to go look, but nonetheless, I found arches for anywhere from $7.43 a sheet up to, believe it or not, $16, $15.99 on one place. I was horrified. How does anybody charge that much? So be careful when you go out there shopping. But the place where I found the $7.43 one is over at Jackson's Art, and that's what I'm going to link you to in the doobly-doo. I normally link to Blick, you might know that, that's where I have done my shopping for years, but I have been struggling because they use ShareASale, and if you know anything about the way ShareASale has been going, um, it's not tracking the sales, so I'm not getting credit when I recommend a product purchase to you. So I'm going to try, and hopefully by the time you see this video, I will have already become an affiliate at Jackson's, because they have better prices on the paper anyway. So I will link that in the doobly-doo so that you can go shopping and get yourself a deal on some arches. And the Saunders Waterford, I think, is $6.10 a sheet. So $6.10 versus $7.43. I will let you make your choice about what it is that you want. Now, before we get to the final comparison of the papers, I want to let you know that the Watercolor Wednesdays class live portion ends tomorrow. So the last live session, I've been doing Zoom calls that are an hour or more each, and we paint together, and we've been doing this all month. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing reflections, so we'll do glass and metal. And these are the other paintings that we've done all month long, and some of them were cards on one of the days, but they've been really fun. They've been well attended, and if you're interested in seeing all of the replays, you can sign up for the Watercolor Wednesdays class. And that one is still available for a discount until the very end of July 31st. And then August 1st, everything goes back up to its normal prices. So make sure you get yourself a World Watercolor Month discount before that runs out. So let's look at the paintings one more time and I'll just recap what I think worked and didn't because of the papers. 
On this one, the nice soft yellow didn't end up going kind of cream and funky on me. It stayed yellow. And all of this stayed nice and white. But what I was really happy with was the color of the sand because it didn't pick up any cream from the Saunders that's the darker one. It just stayed nice and bright. And that was really helpful. And also the difference between these colors I was able to get because of the white of the paper. And even though there's a little bit of the same ultramarine turquoise in the sky as there is here, I put enough of some of the other blues that I was able to separate them. So I can play more with the actual colors on this paper. But I also remember used a really crazy wild technique of just wet and wet for the clouds, which I can do really well on the Saunders Waterford. But the other painting that I did did not work out so great up in here because I have all of these messy places where the wash didn't work great. And that's a downside of Saunders Waterford in my mind, at least for me as a painter. Other people might have no problem with it whatsoever. But I was able to get really soft edges because you can do that really well with this paper because it's got such a soft surface. I was able to keep all these nice brights in here, layering in some browns over top of gold colors to make kind of almost a purplish feeling color, which also came into play down here. And then also kept whites out here. These look like a different white than that does. These look like they're white from a bright white paper. You can kind of see how that feels very white and this feels very white. Here I did wash over some of this so I could knock back some of that whiteness because it was too much white. So even with that paper that felt so dark at the beginning, it actually ends up still feeling light because I have all these dark colors surrounding it. And I ended up with all of this. None of this is gouache. Same thing with this painting. Nothing is gouache. It's all done with negative painting. Same on this one. This is all just watercolor. I'm doing negative painting around all of the bubbles and you know, soft edges around one side, hard edges around the rocks, and then hard edges around the bubbles. And the bubbles come and go with different values, meaning some darks and some lights. And then some of these whites were too bright. Remember, this is the darker of the papers. And I actually ended up washing over a gray on, on this side of every rock so the rocks could cast shadows onto the foam. And look how realistic that looks because I'm able to cast those shadows and darken that and make it more of a gray color than the white. And the white was the darker color of, of paper. So just because it looks dark, you know, if you're buying it in the store, it doesn't mean it's going to paint dark. It's all in what you do with it. And then we've got the, uh, the paintings on white backgrounds. So this one has lots of nice crisp contrast here. I've got real soft contrast where the light color is around these flowers and harder contrast, sharper edges. And I just, I like the feel of this one. It came out quite nice. I don't miss that dark background from the photo. And then same with this one, I've got really nice crisp edges around it. All those bottles have nice, crisp, sharp outer edges. And I was still able with my arches to get these kind of soft washes and uh, that sort of thing. And the two colors, this one is a little bit brighter. You can just see barely, <laughs> just barely, that this is brighter than this. But this is gonna give me a sharper contrast and really pop that more. Whereas here, I wanted something that was gonna feel a little softer, a little more vintage. So that's kind of some advantages for the two different types of arches and the two different colors that they offer. So if you are one of my $10 and up patrons, or if you wanna become one, you get to choose between any of these except for um, the, uh, the one that I didn't turn the camera on for, which was the mushrooms. Sorry, little mushrooms, very sad for you but uh, please go over to Patreon this weekend and answer the poll. <laughs> and I'll put one of these together for you for a tutorial. All right, thank you so much for joining me and for talking paper, and I'll see you guys next time 
If you want to come to the Zoom call tomorrow, then I will put a link in the doobly-doo to Art Venture where you can RSVP. And we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.